Now among those went up to worship at the feast, some were Greek. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. And so Christ says in 32, Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. He said this to show by what kind of death he was going to die. You've heard me say before that I would, I've always wanted, carved into the pulpit, Sir, we wish to see Jesus, or a sticker, or something, to remind the preacher that that's what you want. Well, maybe it's not what you want, but it's definitely what you need. Christ preached purely, certainly, definitively, sacrificially. That is what we need, regardless of what we may want. And the reason that I've always wanted that there was so that every time I got up to preach, I never forget to leave out Jesus. And then I remember, well, if I have to be reminded to preach about Jesus, then I don't have any business preaching in the first place. And so I look at this text a bit different now. Rather than a reminder to me as the pastor of the church to preach Jesus, to give you Jesus, this text recently as I looked at it over and over and over this week showed me from the Greek ironically since the Greek was for those who were coming to the feast exactly what was happening in this text and this is the most glorious thing this is the true gospel this is what you two just confessed before God that you would do and that you would rather die then fall away from the but then, then the promises, the confession that you just made. So, no pressure. I would rather die than fall away from this faith. And you too, I believe, are young enough to where you will face actual persecution. Now, we Christians today, we claim persecution, but truly, we don't really, we're not really persecuted. I think the church could use a little more persecution to strengthen the faith of those who actually believe. What we receive today is discomfort. Discomfort is not persecution. You speaking that Christ is your Savior and someone going, no, -uh, you dirty Christian, that's not persecution. That's just people being people. But I believe that in your day, you will see true persecution. The rights of Christians being taken away. The move of the Turks into place of power. The Christian church will lessen. But remember this. You too especially. The word of the Lord endures forever. So Turk and devil be damned. What you have confessed and what we all have confessed is the truth. And while they may persecute and even later on come to take all of our lives and have true persecution, let us all die with these words, Sir, I wish to see Jesus. I wish to see Jesus. You threaten me with a sword? Good, I say. Because I want to see Jesus. You threaten Christians with true persecution? 
I say good. Let us be persecuted for the name of Jesus Christ. I would, I would rather be persecuted for Jesus Christ than lauded as a Mohammedan any day of the week. And so when my time of dying comes, I hope to have these words on my lips, but not before my eyes. Because when I was translating the text and I was thinking over the text and I kept thinking, well, these Greeks are wanting to see Jesus. They're basically clamoring to see Jesus. Well, then you have all of this other text where Christ is saying, basically, well, not basically, literally, but I'll paraphrase. If you want to see Jesus, if you want to follow me, you must do so unto death. Because anyone who serves me follows me, and where I am, my servant will be also. Therefore, that Good Friday song, Were You There?, is answered in the word yes. You were there when they crucified your Lord. Because where Christ is, His servant is also. Were you there when He yelled, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani? Yes, you were there. Because where His servant is, where He is, His servant is also. Were you there when He said, it is finished? Yes, you were there. Were you there when He lied in that spicy tomb? Yes, you were there. Were you there when he arose the victor from the dark domain? Yes, you were there. Sir, we wish to see Jesus, says the Greek. But to you baptized and confirmed, I say, you've seen him. You have seen him. Through your baptism, you were there, and you are there. And that's the beauty of Christianity, is that there's never a time that we're not at the incarnation, crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension. There's never a time that we're not there. All of that is poured onto us in the waters of holy baptism, onto you. And you confirmed this to be true today. That where Christ is, you will be also. And that neither death, nor life, nor demon, nor angel, nor princes, or no powers on this earth can rip you away from the love that is in Christ Jesus. That's what you confirmed. And as soon as you confirmed it, the devil fled. From you, he'll have nothing to do with. Because Christ has you there by His side. So when the Greeks say, we wish to see Jesus, I don't think that they really understood what they were asking. But Christ answers the question anyway. Sir, we wish to see Jesus. And Jesus says this. Now my soul is troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And then a voice from heaven said, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. But what God the Father was pointing to was the crucifixion and the resurrection of His Son. Because that's what glorifies the name of the Father. And once again, I want to remind you, when the Greeks say, we wish to see Jesus, when you say, we wish to see Jesus, there's only one way to see Jesus, and that is where He is lifted up, where He is exalted, so that we can look up and see Him and say, there is our Savior. And then Christ says this, Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. And when I 
and lifted up on that cross, I will draw all men to myself. So when we say, sir, I wish to see Jesus, remember this. Sometimes you get what you ask for. When you say, sir, I wish to see Jesus, remember that the most clear view of Christ is Him on the cross. Lift it up high for you to see. And you must look. You must not look away from the crucified Savior. Because without crucifixion, there can be no resurrection. Without Resurrection, there can be no crucifixion. This is the first, this is the faith that you have received. And this is the faith that you have confirmed. So I leave you with this in particular, you two. But all of you. But you two listen up. Always live and walk in the light of Christ. Because there will come a day when darkness will overshadow the world. But fear not, for light will re-enter, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. And so while you're waiting for that judgment, where he finds you innocent, when you, while you're waiting for Christ to come to judge the living and the dead, fix your eyes on the crucified Savior. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. You wish to see Jesus? You must lift up your eyes to the cross. And as long as your eyes are fixed on the cross, Satan wants nothing to do with you. Can't have anything to do with you. Eat his body. Drink his blood, but never lose focus. Your con both of your confirmation verses, because I give the same one to everyone, is this. Even though you look to the cross, or particularly you need to look to the cross, because Revelation 2.10 says, Fear not what you are about to suffer, but be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. And that is Christianity. That's what you've confirmed. You see, today, your baptism was your coronation. Today was your throwing. And a crown awaits you. I'm as sure of this as I am of my own baptism. Thanks be to God. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. For the one who comes in the name of the Lord came for you too and for all of you. Thanks be to God. Amen.